So a lot of us have taken up cooking as a hobby during all the 2020 shenanigans. What we wanted to do was give back to some of the YouTubers that have helped us stay sane and entertained during all of this craziness. So today, we're going to make a cutting board for Josh Weissman in the style of a Josh Weissman video. Because imitation is the sincerest form of simping. a cutting board for Josh. And cutting boards are really critical because they're the heart of the entire kitchen. Everything you cut first goes to that board before it goes into a pot, a pan, a dish, a plate. They're one of the most important pieces to your kitchen. And there's a couple things that make a cutting board really nice. It needs to be heavy enough that it won't slide around. Uh, we like to put rubber feet on the back of ours just to be extra safe, but I, you're just gonna see our process today of how we build cutting boards and how we can make one personalized. And if you work with your hands for a living or I don't know who doesn't use their hands, but if you if you work with any sort of tool, you know that there's nothing more special than a personalized tool that you can use and it's made just for you. So without further ado, let's build this, shall we? All right, so we're gonna start by milling all of our lumber. For this project, we're using two inch thick cherry and two inch thick maple boards at about four and a half feet long. This recipe makes three boards, so the length of your boards can be adjusted depending on how many you wanna build. Using the joiner, you're going to get one side of your boards perfectly flat. And then the smooth side references against the fence to get one edge of it flat, because this lumber is pretty rough from the store. You can buy pre-milled lumber to save some time, but dang it, it's expensive! Then you're going to send those same boards through the planer, which is going to get the opposite side, which is still rough, perfectly flat and parallel with the first edge. I know this is getting a little technical, but this is important stuff to know if you want to make a quality board. This isn't any of that IKEA garbage you see. It's just made of recycled cereal boxes and tears. Using the bandsaw, cut the boards into one and a half inch wide strips. This releases a lot of tension inside the wood and they're all wavy. They look like french fries. I don't know. I, don't, I just don't have anything else to compare it to. Repeat the milling process until you have smooth and consistent strips that are about one and three quarter inches by one and a quarter inches. No horsing around. You have to take this step seriously or your cutting board will be terrible and you'll cry and you'll say, Oh, Jenny and Davis, why is my board so bad? It's because you weren't focused. So now you're going to take your slender boys and arrange them in a cool pattern that you want to make the cutting board. Now it's time to bust out your pipe clamps. Be sure to use enough. You want to clamp on the top and bottom so that it doesn't bow. Glue the boards with a waterproof wood glue. It's got to be waterproof. I mean, this is a cutting board. It's going to get wet. It's going to, it's, wait, what is, oh, that's, that's disgusting. I'm sorry you had to see that. Anyway, so you want to use a waterproof glue. Otherwise, the cutting board is going to fall apart. Fun fact about wood glue. So if you were to drop one of these cutting boards off of a cliff, I don't, I don't know why you'd be with a cutting board next to a cliff. But if you were and the board broke in half at the bottom, it would break along the wood grain. It would not break where you glued the joint together. Look at that sexy slide. It's almost impossible to use too much glue. So let the glue dry until it's dry. It takes about two or three hours in humid Houston. So next we're going to take the board out of the pipe clamps and we're going to use a paint scraper to remove the glue squeeze out on the smoothish side. You know, the side that was resting on the pipe clamps. This makes one side even so that we can run it through the planer again. Remember that tool? This way you have perfectly flat and smooth sides because who wants to cut food on a wavy board? Definitely not Papa. Now you can cut your boards to length on the miter saw. Ours are about uh, 17 inches long. You can also use a crosscut sled on the table saw. That's what we normally do, but I was just feeling extra lazy today and I didn't want to pull the table saw off the wall. And look, look at it. It's starting to look like an actual cutting board. At the router table, we cut a 45 degree edge on the bottom, top, and corners. I mean, I don't know about you, but in this house, we're definitely team chamfer over here. None of that roundover nonsense. Also, turn your router speed down. Most of you have got your router set way too dang fast. Slow it down and you won't get as much burning or chip out or tear out or any bad things. Your life will be better if you turn your router speed slower. Ooh, doesn't that look pretty? That looks so nice. Now, just for the flex, we're gonna engrave this cutting board. You don't need a laser engraver to do this project, but it just adds a nice personal touch to whatever it is that you're building. 
I mean, you can ask around, maybe you can find one. A lot of local libraries actually have these kind of tools. So I don't know, maybe call around and see if you live in a place where the library loves you. You can also use a CNC machine, but we hated our CNC, so we got rid of it. Look at him, he's so cute. Oh. And then we're gonna get him ready for finish by sanding at 220 grit after raising the wood fibers with a little bit of water. This keeps the board smooth. Again, it's gonna get wet, the wood fibers are gonna swell, but if you've already swelled them and sanded them down, the board will stay smooth even if it gets a little bit of water in it. Now you're gonna get your little man and brand him. I know some of you think this is inhumane, but this is out of love. We don't want this guy getting lost and it only hurts for a few minutes. Finally, he gets slathered in our board finish. It's made from food safe mineral oil and cosmetic grade beeswax. It just makes the board soft, supple, and just makes you wanna Ugh! Sorry, I don't really know where that came from. Anyway. All right, so this is the finished product. It is a cutting board. It's about 12 inches by 17 inches, and this cherry will darken over time, so it gets that really nice, dark caramel color. Deep, yes, caramel is perfect word for it. And you see its little feet? See his little baby feet? It's got feet. That way it doesn't slide around while you're trying to chop something. Cause that is not safe. All right, so this is where we need your help, internet. We wanna send this to Josh, but he doesn't have his address posted. I get it. We don't either, it's okay. But we need to hear from Josh, so we have to get his attention. Well, we need you to share this video all over social media, on Instagram, YouTube, Reddit, wherever you guys post stuff. Please get Josh's attention, and he can send us a DM on Instagram, and we'll know where to send it to. The little man just needs to get back home. I know, I'm so sad and lonely. He doesn't belong with us. As much as we'd love to keep him, we can't, he's not ours. <laughs> You know what else is full of chopping hard wood, slathered in oil, and gets Josh's attention? B-roll. Alright guys, so we did it. We built Josh a cutting board. Hopefully you guys can help us get it to him. But yeah, we started with some maple and some cherry. It looks beautiful. I love that color combo. I mean, that's what we build all the time. So I hope he likes the engraving on it. We spent a lot of time trying to get the proportions quite right. Try to get the little man just right. Again, we would love your help trying to get this board to Josh. So if you could tag him or whatever you want to do on social media to try and get his attention, um, that would help us out because, you know, we just we want to get it to him. Got to get his little man back home. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Hit the subscribe button if you want to follow us as we start our woodworking business in the Houston area. Um, we put out content about every week. We have a podcast as well. It's called the Let's Quit Podcast if you want to listen to that. Otherwise, uh, thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.